Why, hello ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy, William Worth, and today's video is on a desert base guide. So, as I was playing through the summer, I had a lot of trouble keeping the ice flingomatics fueled, and nothing smolders in the desert, so, I thought it'd be a great idea to show you my ideas. So, let's get right into it. Before we get started, you'll need a lot of charcoal, and I mean a lot. Not a full stack of 40, best to get 80. So just go burn down a bunch of trees. It could be birch nut trees. It could be regular pine trees. It's up to you. So what you need is a basic outline. It's however you want it. Usually I put uh, cobblestones around the pond just to move quickly. And uh, this is just a rough look of it. Later on in the video, you'll see my final design choice. Because right here, I was having a bit of trouble of how I wanted to make it. I wasn't really sure. Because I was like, ah, look, that looks too close to the pond, so let me back it up a bit. So, yeah, just keep watching the video, and you'll see how I finally did it. All right, so this is the final decision I made and how I want to do it. And I made little four areas to put, you know, endothermic fire pits and regular fire pits down. Just to have light all around the base because sometimes you don't have enough light to move around. And it's a really small base, so, I mean, it's however you want. You can put up to four, you can put two. And maybe you can put uh, science machines in those little four corners. But I already have everything learned, so, I mean, I don't really have a use for them. And uh, in the end, I did screw up over there, as you saw in the last clip, because the fire pits, there were two of the same ones on the same side. So what I did was do it diagonally. As you can see here, two endothermic pits are not close to each other. So I have one on one side and one on the other. And same with the fire pits. I move them to each side. And uh, the road helps you move a little bit faster. That's up to you. You can do the roads like this. You can do it like however you want. You can do it like zigzags for all I care. But uh, hopefully you guys do like this choice. So this is how it looks at night. As you can see, the whole base gets lit up if you have four, all four going at the same time. And they're relatively low lights. But usually you'll probably just have one going. So pick whatever size you want to be on and put stuff strategically where you want it. So some of the main things I want in a base is to know what moon cycle is. Sometimes I just don't pay attention to moon cycle as normally as I should. So I put moon dials. I put two because putting one would just look kind of weird. And I put them out in each corner. But as I said before, you can put whatever you want. You can put night lights there to make it have a nice spooky vibe to it. Make it all, all dark and mysterious. But I put moon dials just to have that little so I know what time it is. What moon it's going to be. So when it's full moon, I can go murder Glomer. Also, I make bird cages. Just in case I have a tons of monster meat I bring with me. Or I go fight the hounds in the desert. And I can have a bunch of eggs. And as I said before, I put one across the other so it doesn't look all weird. It looks all nice and pretty. I get my bird. Oh, yeah. And I don't collect another set of birds. So, I so you don't have to keep feeding them. I just get them from my main base instead of having to go and get new birds. Alright, next you'll need some containers. As I do here, I put up to three on each side just to make it look a little nice. And I put drying racks. That's up to you if you're going to go meat based or veggie based. As I said, everything in this video is up to you. But use this video as kind of a basic outline. And you'll need storage because you'll collect a lot of things in the desert. You can keep grass, twigs, and wood or whatever you want. But I know what you're thinking. Wow, William, what am I going to do for grass? Well, you don't need a grass or twig farm. What you can do is just go pick on tumbleweeds. You get up to three grass or three twigs and a mystery item or sometimes a mix of both. So, yeah, you don't need to go make a twig and grass farm because it will get dried out and you'll need to fertilize it every so often. 
Same thing with wood. Nothing in the desert smolders, so you can plant trees. You just need to plant it on the grass area because you can't plant anything on the desert ground. And you can put man-made turf down of grass, so that's completely up to you, and trees will still grow on it. Now on to food. What you'll do for food is what you can do is plant a bunch of fleshy bulbs down and after a while they'll start to uh, grow. And I know what you're thinking, oh great now I gotta fight off the eye plants. But no you do not. See after a few days, bam, they're all there. Because eye plants cannot grow on this type of ground, on the sand. And you can just collect a bunch of meat. And the more the better. Now the next and my personal favorite is the cacti. If you pick it normally, you take a lot of damage. So if you put on armor, it takes exactly one hit point. And usually these cactuses, or cacti, for you uh, grammar Nazis in there, you get both the flower and the cactus, which regain sanity, health, and hunger. So it's a three threat combo. It's one of the best food items, personally, I think, in the game. So now, if you have a successful bunny farm, <coughs> <coughs> check out my other videos. But if you have a successful spider farm, what you can do is get a bunch of silk and spider glands, just so you can heal yourself up. But you want to get the silk. I cannot stress that enough. You'll need it for an item you're going to make later on. So with that successful spider farm, <coughs> check out my videos. You can make a bunch of fishing poles because the oasis is good for fish and random packages which will give you trinkets that you can give to the ant line. And this fish you can hang it up on the drying racks and make jerky. But it's completely up to you. Same with the crock pots. You can put three fish and one twig to make fish sticks to regain health and a good amount of hunger. Quick note what you want to make is some thermal stones so you can stay nice and cool during the summer if you want to venture out away from your base. Also, there are sandstorms that obstruct your view and make you walk slower. So what you want to make is some fashion goggles, or regular goggles, so you can see through the sandstorm. You can get the blueprint from the at line, or you can fish it out of the pond. So hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. It did take quite a while to make, and I did show you some good food items to get. Remember, this is all up to you. You can make the base exactly like this, or you can make it something different. You can put more crock pots. You can put two fridges. I don't know. You can maybe put seven bird cages if you want. But this is all up to you and your personal preference on how you play. But hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. I worked really hard. This took a lot of time. And the summer is one of the hardest seasons to me. Winter is considered the easiest because we got the scaled furnace. But you can also put tents and whatnot around here if you like. But this is just kind of a basic feel to it. So hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. I did work really hard. Don't forget to subscribe because believe me, I'm 100% worth it.